One last thing I want to talk about in this section, um, we spend a bunch of time talking about tension forces. It's also worth noting that there's an opposite to the tension force, which in real life is equally as important as the tension force. We don't really need to dwell on it in this class because once you understand the tension force, this is just the complete opposite. So you really already understand this as well. It's referred to as the compression force. So whereas the tension force is a pulling force that's caused by stretching something, the compression force um, is a pushing force that is caused by squishing something. Um, so just as, you know, if I take an object, if I try to pull on it and stretch it out, it will resist. But also, if I try to squish it inwards like this, it will push back out by exactly the same logic because the atoms that make up that material, um, just as they don't want to be stretched out into too long of a structure, they also don't want to be squished down so that the atoms are like squished and packed too tightly together. So it's, it works exactly the same way as the tension force. It's just the complete opposite. So just like with the tension force, um, so just like tension, there's no formula to plug into. Um, and the direction is just the exact opposite argument of the tension force. Um, it's pushing away from the material that is getting squished. Um, so like an example that I rigged up here, which I won't try to hold up in front of the camera because it's a little bit unstable. So like for instance, this here, you see how the block is being held up by this support pillar basically. If you're interested in like buildings and architecture, you can think of this as being like a support pillar. If you're interested in the human body, you can think of this as being like a bone. Like when we stand up, the bones in our legs get compressed and they have to hold our bodies upward by this force that's kind of reacting against them getting squished down. Um, so you'll see this occurring in some problems when you have, instead of having a rope pulling on something, you'll have like a support rod that's pushing on something. And um, these tension forces and compression forces occur equally often in the world of architecture and building and also in, in the world of the human body. Um, they're equally important. Um, they're kind of like the two, you know, in, in terms of like building and engineering, these are basically the two, two basic tools that you have access to is tension forces and compression forces. You can either stretch things or you can squish them. Um, so here's a simple example where I have a tension force and a compression force in the same problem here. Um, we have in this case a block that's being held at equilibrium. There's a rope which is above it, which is holding it upwards and, and it's tied to the wall. And then we also have a support rod um, over on the left and that support rod is pushing outwards. It's in compression. So we would say the rope on top is in tension and the rod on the left is in compression. Um, so what is the value of the tension force and what is the value of the compression force? in order to hold this 12 kilogram block in place um, using these forces is my question. So let's do it. Um, first thing you do is draw a free body diagram. Um, you've got gravity is pulling downwards. Let me actually use a different color so that this doesn't get too cluttered. You've got gravity pulling downwards. You've got the compression force is gonna go to the right because that support rod is pushing not pulling. So it's going to point in the opposite direction from the direction the rod is going in. And then the tension force is pulling. So that's going to be up this way at a 35 degree angle from the horizontal. So this angle here will be your 35 degrees here. And so um, this force here is mg. This force here is t. And compression forces, a lot of times we can call c. So you have three forces. This is a two-dimensional free body diagram, so we need to break it into components. So we'll have X components, Y components, and you've got T, C, and MG as your three forces here. 
the tension force is the x component is negative t cosine 35 the y component is plus t sine of 35 the compression force the x component is plus c the y component is zero and the gravitational force x component is zero y component is minus mg so my two equations are going to be in the x direction minus t cosine of 35 plus c equals zero and in the y direction i'll have t sine of 35 minus mg equals zero and the equal zero is coming from the question would tell you that the block is being held at equilibrium uh, and is stationary uh, in this setup. So now I can start solving. Um, from the second equation, I can actually solve for the tension right away. This isn't even really like a coupled system. Um, so I'm just going to have mg over sine 35. So that's going to be 12 times 9.8 over sine of 35 which is 12 times 9.8 over 35 sine 205 Newton. And then we can plug that result back over here. So minus 205 cos 35 equals minus C. So C equals the answer I just got times cosine of 35, which is 168 Newton. And that's all there is to doing compression forces. Um, you just use the standard F equals MA procedure and just put in the compression forces as pushing forces, and that's it.